certain periods of time encoded and passed on. That is the bottom line. So I'd like to go in my final section to talk to you about the Vedic cosmology. In addition to this body of knowledge, there were also speculations and philosophical understandings of how did the creation come about? What is this creation? How did things come about? So there's a lot of stories about that. And one of them we see in Nasadiya Sukta, where it starts with a prediction correction model. It says, for example, this is a Griffith translation. There was nothing, not existence, nowhere, heavens, what covered it, and uh, so on. There was neither death, immortality, no night, no day. Then the one, which is Brahman, breathed windlessly, self-sustaining. There was the one, there was no other. That is a prediction. Then it corrects itself, but says, but after all, who knows? Who can say where it all came from? How creation happened? The devas themselves are later than creation. So it says that maybe he or she, even maybe even that creator himself does not know. So this is the amazingly scientific way of approaching a problem. There's a hypothesis saying that maybe this is what it is. And there's a correction saying maybe even that is not correct. So there is, there is no dogmatic understanding God created the world in 4004 BCE. And let's believe it, six days he created the world and that is it. Rather, there is an openness and that openness is what we are seeing in the Indian knowledge systems as I gave examples earlier. Yagne Valkya. The Rishi, one of the Rishis confronted him, Gargi uh, confronts him and asks him, what does he understand about cosmology in Brihadaranyika Upanishad? And he says, uh, for example, his understanding, he says, everything on earth wrapped in water, we know water is mostly present in the world. Water wrapped in air, air is wrapped in the sky, sky in the world of Gandharvas, his planets, and the Gandharvas in the world of Aditya, which is the sun. He got this wrong, saying the world of sun is wrapped in the world of Chandra, moon. That is wrong. Uh, the world of moon is wrapped in the world of nakshatras, the stars, and stars are wrapped in the world of devas, devas in the world of Indra. We don't know what these two means. The world of Indra is wrapped in the world of uh, uh, Prajapati, galactic center. And the world of the galactic center is wrapped in Brahmana, which is the universe. So clearly there was an understanding of cosmology about these macroisms, that one is bigger, 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 and so on. These kind of understandings were very, very clear in the Indian context. It's very interesting to also see that the yuga models and the understanding of Brahma's timeline corresponds with the big crunch model that has been proposed uh, in literature. In Vedic cosmology, Srimad Bhagavatam, we know this, the Chatur Yuga model, which talks about four is to three, so two is to one ratio that talks from Kali Yuga to Satya Yuga, it takes about 4.32 million years, 71 of them make a Maha Yuga, 14 of them make a Manvantara, from then to Kalpa, creation. So there's 4.32 billion years, and that is equal to one day of Brahma. It goes through one night of Brahma, pralaya, dissolution, and so on. So totally, it is a period of rest and everything combined. It comes to about uh, 9 billion years, let us say. So each Brahma is supposed to live for 100 such Brahma years. We are also said to be in the 51st year of the current Brahma. Science is today speculating that uh, the Big Bang was an inflationary period, and that inflation, rapid inflation, led to the uh, formation of galaxies and other things where we are today. 13.8 billion years have, uh, kind of have progressed since this point. This is our understanding today. There is also in physics today the big bounce model, the recurrent creation and destruction one, where a previous universe could have collapsed due to gravity, and that singularity gave rise to the new uh, uh, the creation the big bounce model. Amazingly, this uh, uh, physicist, Roger Penrose, his name must be familiar to most of you because just one month back, he received the Nobel Prize. He received the Nobel Prize of physics on his understanding of black holes. So uh, Roger Penrose, in this paper, he wrote about apparent evidence of hawking points in the cosmic microwave background sky. He points out anomalies in the sky. He counted up to 30 of them. And he says, these anomalies are the remnants of the black holes of the previous universe. He says that the universe, the Big Bang forms new galaxies, goes to a maximum expansion period. Then contraction happens under the, some effects that we are not understood, whether it's because of dark matter, whatever, something is causing some contract, contraction. And that contraction eventually with the existing black holes gives rise to singularity and these leave their impressions in the new universe. And this impressions I'm calling it as vasana. So uh, it leaves impression in the new universe and it starts. And the question that we need to ask is, 
if the Big Bang happened and there's a universe that we see today, why is it we don't see symmetry in the distribution of stars and galaxies? Why are there some clusters of galaxies in some places, star clusters? Why is this uh, 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 anomaly? Why don't we see uniformity everywhere? Because we imagine a precision in uniformity unless acted upon by some other kind of forces. And those forces are what he's proposing. They are the remnants of the black holes of the previous uh, universe. Very, very interesting for me to see this. There's a story of uh, uh, cosmology here in Brahma's concert. So Kakadmi was a king. His daughter was Revati, beautiful woman, and she's very, very well accomplished. And he could not find a husband for her. He searched all over earth. He couldn't find a good husband. So he said, let me go to the creator himself. I'll go to Brahma and ask, have you made a husband for my daughter? So he and his daughter go off to uh, Brahmaloka. And when they land up there, they observe that Brahma is enjoying a Gandharva concert. And so they respectfully wait till that concert is over. Once the concert is over, Brahma calls him and says, come here. And so he asks, why have you come here? And uh, he says, I have come to find a spouse for my wife, uh, for my uh, daughter. And uh, Brahma laughs. Brahma laughs. And he says, in the time that you are waiting, 27 Chaturyugas are over on earth. Everybody you knew is dead and gone. Everybody is gone. Kingdoms are gone. Everything is gone. So this king is very, very upset. He's sad. And uh, Brahma says, don't worry, you go back to earth. And by the time you reach earth, it'll be time for Bhagavan Krishna to be born. And his brother Balarama is a correct uh, husband for your daughter. So he goes back. And that story is amazing. It's there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And it talks about a uh, passage of 27 Chaturyugas and 116.64 million years. That's what it translates into. And I tried to see if we take the Milky Way center as a, as a center, in a radius of 8 million light years, uh, where are the galaxies? And we see Andromeda galaxies here, local group is here, and other such things. We are not at 116 million uh, uh, years. If you want to see where is 116 million years, we have to put a local group of galaxies over here and we find the Lanikia supercluster. Somewhere over there is this 116 million years. So the extent of Brahmaloka, as far as uh, Indians are concerned, the universe was a Lanikia supercluster. That was the imagination of our ancestors. We can take this notion of space time and uh, using today's understanding, we can say each minute of Brahma is 6 million Earth years. Kakudmi spent so much of time listening to the concert. Therefore, Brahma's concert took 19 minutes, 20 second seconds in dilated time. So this is something we can conclude by using uh, today's knowledge systems. I'll end with the story finally. The uh, cosmology also talks about creation, creation of various constellations and so on. There is a Greek story that uh, Pleiades were uh, virginal companions of the goddess called Artemis. And so uh, uh, one day Orion the hunter he spotted the Pleiades who are playing and he started uh, enamored by them. He started chasing them. And uh, Artemis is a goddess and she's a protector of these virgin girls. And she was very, very upset that the hunter is uh, chasing uh, these girls. So she has him killed. He's killed by a scorpion. And once he's killed by a scorpion, Zeus, the god, he immortalized Orion and the Pleiades as stars in the sky. So he makes this Orion constellation and Pleiades is over here. And a question came, why is it there are only six stars that are visible? The Pleiades are seven sisters, but only six stars are visible. Well, the Greek story says the seventh sister was called Merope, and she had an affair with a mortal man. And she was so ashamed that she hid her face. Because she's hiding her face, you can't see her. That is why you can only see the six sisters over there. Amazingly, in the Indian context, also we have a similar kind of story and this story is in the Markandeya Purana. It's in other Puranas also. It says that at the home of the Saptarishis, Agni was officiating and he uh, was besotted with the wives of the Saptarishis. They were beautiful women. So he became so ashamed. What am I doing? Why am I attracted to married women? He was ashamed and he started doing tapasya. And Swaha was his companion. And Swaha felt neglected. And uh, she was very upset about this. So she wanted to practice deception and take advantage of his weakness. His weakness was he loved the wives of the uh, Saptarishis. So Swaha takes the form of the six Saptarishis wives and seduces Agni. She could not take the form of Arundhati. Arundhati is very chaste. And she, that power was so great, she could not take her form. 
She could only take the six wives form. And therefore the six headed Kartikeya Skanda was born. It caused great disturbance in the world. And so the forest dwellers complained. They went and asked uh, the, to the gods and said, we saw Agni having a forbidden romance with these wives of the Saptarishis. That is why this has happened. And the poor wives, they were all innocent. And they left the Saptarishis in shame. They had done nothing wrong to Swaha who had done it. So they left the Saptarishis in shame and they became the six sisters, the Kritika Nakshatra. The seventh sister who was missing is Arundhati. She remained with her husband. So that's why Arundhati Vashishta is a binary star. We see that even today in Southern Indian marriages, after the marriage, the bride and groom must go and see Arundhati Vashishta because they are an exemplar of a good married relationship, uh, loyal to each other. So that is the story over here. So when, when we see stories like this, that there is commonality between Indian stories and Greek stories, we have to contest the assertions coming from uh, people like Pingri and others. Did knowledge go out of India or did knowledge come into India? I will breeze through this stop and we can take questions. So we can 